D2DNY Real World HVAC Simplified and now in this video I'm going to be showing you how to read and use your analog gauge manifolds and your digital gauge manifolds this is for HVAC air conditioning now this one is a digital one and it also comes with a app with an app very fancy huh <laughs> very fancy I love this one right it's currently my favorite gauge manifolds All right but we're gonna start off with this one here but as always before we get into the video I want you to go ahead and subscribe if you have not subscribed and smash the bell icon so when I upload videos like these you get them right away all right see what's going on in here my compressors and an active AC unit real-time real-world real HVAC okay so on this analog gauge manifolds guys we have uh, uh, the low side gauges or the compound gauges or the low pressure gauges uh, let me turn the lights off it's a bit reflective and we have the high side um, 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 gauges and uh, are the high pressure gauges and this is you can see there's their color color oriented so the 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 high side is going to be red that red accent red needles coupled with red hoses low side blue needles blue accent coupled with blue hoses okay and always you will have low side on the left high side on the right okay low side on the left high side on the right okay so that's what it's always, always going to be now before you can read these gauges you need to um, know how to properly connect it to your system so here we go so the low side which is the blue see it's blue hoses and it goes right here this is your um, low side access port and this is the suction line one way you could tell the suction line is because it's going to be insulated or wrapped um, sometimes it won't be unless it's an old unit <laughs> and the insulation falls off but you know typically that's going to be the suction line because it's going to be wrapped it's going to be cold and um, it's going to be a larger pipe that's attached to the compressor the smallest pipe is oftentimes going to be your discharge line the compressor discharge as you can see on the discharge I have my red hose high pressure high pressure is high temperatures right so you see my red hose is connected already and I just I'm going to connect uh, my low side right to my blue hose I just remove this cap protective cap screw on my hose like so it's a clockwise rotation bit of a struggle using one hand okay there you go all right so I'm on open up okay now let's get into now that you know how to connect your gauges to your system if you got questions regarding this leave it in the comment section just so you know this video is geared towards beginners and maybe junior technicians or mechanics perhaps do it yourselfers I don't know but pros you can chime in if you want to you know help out the HVAC community all right so now that you, you, you connect your gauge to the system guys now let's go ahead and read it all right so on the outside of the gauge the outside numbers the numbers on the very outside that's going to be your pressure readings right and these are in um, PSI or PSIG in this part of the world right it could be in other units if you're at a different part of the world a different country in the US it's um, PSI or PSIG and um, um, that's what this is and we go from this one goes from minus 30 or 30 inches of vacuum or 30 INHG that's when you pull in a vacuum the needle is going to go backwards it's going to go backwards to show you when you're in a vacuum right and so it goes from minus 30 all the way to um, 500 once you get to 300 
it kind of doesn't make any sense anymore. Um, you know, it goes like 300 in the middle here is like 400. It's still reading, and then right here is 500. But it stopped giving you a scale at 300 on the low side, right? Low pressure side because you don't really have refrigerant operating at these numbers. Hence the reason why the low side is going always going to have like you know cuts off at a lower range, right? Now if we move over to the high side, you can see the same thing. We go from zero, but this side we go up to a much higher pressure range, 800, right? Um, that's that. Now if we look at these colors in here. That's literally um, this old thing combined with the pressures um, is a PT chart because in here the refrigerant you got R14A, you got R22, you get R404A and R134A. All these are the uh, uh, colors and for the various refrigerants. They are showing the saturated temperatures at a particular pressure. So, for example, at um, 100. PSI. All right, let's look at what it's reading right now. We're currently reading um, 200, and you got to divvy up the number. It's the reason why you should get you one of those bad boys. No divvying up. So you got to divvy up the the increments here. So we know that um, from here to here is a, is a 50 PSI. So in the middle here, it's going to be 25 PSI. So we are currently at um, so you see 200, 205, 210, 215. 220, 225. So we're at 215 right now. These are increments of five. Now, mind you, this may not be the same for the true for the gauge that you're using. Your gauges may have different increments. You got to check it out. You'd have to, you know, divvy them up yourself and get your measurements correct. All right. So we're currently at 200 and, and, and um, two, uh, 205, 10, 15 psi. At 215 psi, these are your temperatures in Fahrenheit, right? And this system uses our, our 410A, right? I think so. Yes, it is 410A. Yeah, R14A, refrigerant. Okay, so R14A, we know it's R14A, so we look at our saturated temperatures, and for, at this pressure, we are lined up with, uh, this is 80 right here. Okay, this is 80, so this is 70. This looks like about um, 72, 74. 74-ish degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's how you read that. And if it was, if we had, we were looking at R22, we look at this temperature scale. It goes from, you know, I said minus 30 all the way to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, and so on and so forth. You know, if we go into R404, R134A. Now, mind you, uh, other gauges will have other refrigerants on their chart on the chart, and this is just a basically, uh, this is just a uh, P pressure temperature chart. If you combine the pressures with all the temperatures, it's perfectly lined up. The same way it will be lined up on your pressure temperature chart, your PT chart. If you're a pro, if you're a beginner, you better know what that is. You know what I'm saying? If you're a do-it-yourselfer, obviously, you're just an intruder. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Questions, leave it in the comment section. And obviously, on the high side, you have the same thing. Um, you know, it's just that you have higher pressure um, ranges, and thus, you have higher temperature ranges. As you can see, we're stopping at 160 for 14A here, but over here, we're only stopping at 90. Again, there's no need to bring the low side temperatures so high because it's low side, low pressures and low temperatures. We need it over the high side though. We need to make this bad boy very high because we go higher pressures on the high side. Right now, low and high is equal because the system is off. Compressor is not running. Um, so this is standing pressure. That's why they're both equalized. All right. Do I miss anything? Oh, now before I move on to the good stuff, right? You guys have been patient. You know, just wait. Um, this middle hose right here is used for um, had in a refrigerant is what you connect you connect this hand right here You connect this hand to your refrigerant um, cylinder or your <clears throat> um, Reclaiming a recovery unit or your vacuum pump. Oh, here we go. Oh Real time right just turned on Look at your pressures now Here we go See that you won't find this anywhere guys anywhere else only on my channel real time real world Real HVAC. So now you're going to see your pressures for R14A if you want to know. And this system is water cooled, by the way. But, anyways, um, back to what I was saying. Um, this yellow hose will go to your recovery um, or reclaiming unit, um, your vacuum pump. You're going to pull a vacuum and it's going to go to your um, refrigerant or your, or your charging cylinder to add refrigerant to the system. And it's going to go to your nitrogen tank if you're going to do some pressure testing as well. That's what this hose is for, the yellow one in the middle. And what's going to happen is, 
if you wish to um, charge the refrigerant, if you want to charge the refrigerant into the system, right, you're going to open the low side and allow refrigerant to go. You could open the high side too, but you know, this is for pros, right? Opening this side, you open it in that direction. Let me make sure this is closed. I don't want to spill in the refrigerant and camera. That's closed. So we're going to open here. That's open. And that's closed, right? Open, close. And on the other side, it's reverse. Open, close. Open, close. All right, so if you're charging in a vacuum, system is off, you can charge from the low side. You can charge from the high side as well. Again, this is pro stuff. You have to know what you're doing because you could put liquid in the compressor, you damage the compressor. Know what you're doing. All right, and when you're, when you're pulling a vacuum now, you're obviously going to open both sides. You're going to open that side. You're going you're gonna to open this side and you're going to leave it open and you pull your vacuum and if you're recovering also you're going to want to you know if you're reclaiming you open both sides i think that's it let's move on to the juicy stuff this throw it in the garbage i'm kidding it's still good it's still useful oh one more thing uh for this particular gauge if you want to check your superheat you will look at your um Saturday, for example perfect example um we are at 40 degrees right now because this is 14a saturated um temperatures and if i want to measure my uh, superheat for this particular unit I'd simply take my thermometer and take the temperature underneath the insulation on the copper pipe below here away from the interference of the ambient air around the sensor or the pipe and just get a true pipe temperature reading and then the difference between the pipe temperature reading and my saturated refrigerant uh, temperature right here which is our 14 and I'm using it will be my superheat okay so that's how that works I know for this for the sub cooling the same thing you'll go you'll find a liquid line not the discharge line, the liquid line. You find the liquid line and you'll put your thermometer on the liquid line, try to secure the thermometer so that you're not reading, it's not being interfered with, the readings is not being interfered with by the um, surrounding ambient. And, 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 and so you have a false temperature reading. And then you, the difference would be between the saturated temperature of the refrigerant. Um, and you know that's gonna be, whether it's gonna be the pink one, the, the green one, whatever refrigerant in your system, you match it up and you get your, and divvy it up get your saturated temperature and then you subtract and the difference is going to be a sub cooling now that was so here we are so um this year no need to divvy anything up as you can see we have zero psi zero psi because obviously we're not connected you know the hose is off it's just sitting you know it's not connected so zero and zero perfect no need to divvy anything up you know um we're going from uh, minus 15 to 550 psi we are using our 14a and obviously this says lp for low pressure low pressure psi hp for high pressure psi and this right here guys i could change this unit from psi to bar or to whatever you know because this is digital this is this got this like a computer right here right and for my refrigerant um i just simply press this button right here and you see i got all my selections and then there's there's lots more i could scroll down i even have h2o <laughs> water i still have r12 the list goes on guys the list goes on it's hundreds and hundreds of refrigerant some that even know some that i don't even know about yeah it's just it's here okay so that's the silica refrigerant and so right here this is where i have my saturated temperatures Right, so based on R14A at, at zero PSI, it's minus 60.5. Same over here, minus 60.6. .6. Same difference. All right, so that's saturated, saturated temperature. You see it nice and clear that is, no deviate anything up. You know, if you want, you know, just in case you miss kindergarten, you don't have to, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't know to do maths. Um, you know, you skip kindergarten, so you, you know, you can't do addition and subtractions. And, you know, so you're, you're, you're uh, uh, suction line temperature SLT you can see it right here and courtesy of this sensor which is you know Bluetooth just clamp this on to the you know clamp this clamp onto the suction pipe and voila suction line temperature it's reading ambient temperature because it's sitting in the box and then liquid line temperature right here see you clamp this onto the liquid line and you get the liquid line temperature right here they're reading the same because they're sitting in the box they are Bluetooth and um, um, your wireless connected with your sync by Bluetooth to the gauges um, and then here we go the gauges automatically calculate your superheat for you SH 
133.4, rather high, obviously, because we're not, we, we, are, we aren't on the system, but that's cool. And then the yeah, subcooling would have been here, but simply it shows XXX because it would have been a negative number, right? Because we are saying minus 60 here for my saturated refrigerant uh, temperature, but at the same time, in reality, my liquid line temperature should be lower than my saturated refrigeration temperature. My refrigerant, refrigerant temperature should be um, higher than my, than my liquid line temperature on the high side. You know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why this is showing XXX because it would be like a, a negative number or it would be way out of the range, okay? That's the reason why. But if I'm on the system, it will be showing me my number, my readings, all right? Um, what else? Um, yes, also here, this is um, typically, this is correct. Um, this side as far as like the saturated refrigerant temperature would be lower um than the actual suction line temperature and you know so that's that's correct that's we have that's the reason we have a number here but it's rather high okay this is you know because we're, we're not connected to the system and the system isn't running the compressor isn't running all right otherwise you'd have some serious issues with that system um now if you want to know about the vacuum what about the vacuum right okay so if we're going to pull a vacuum here i simply press this button because here we have only 15 inches of vacuum, which is not which is nothing. 30 inches is full vacuum, and then after that you go deeper and you go to microns. So I hit this button right here, boom. I hit enter here, and then I just scroll down, and no, nope, vacu evacuation, boom. Microns, target, DK. You can play around with play around with your settings if you want. I hit enter there, and look at that, huh? Look at that. Voila. And so on this screen, on this screen, it says right here it's a mirror uh, second screen mode. Alright. And you know I could change the units here you know, from vacuum from inches of um let me show you guys. From inches of um, um vacuum to to M bar to microns. Oh man, this is crazy man. Yo you guys you gotta upgrade your, you gotta upgrade your tools, man. This is dope. All right. Um, and so I'm gonna if I could go back now to regular temperatures and and super heat sub cooling. Super heat sub cooling. Go back up. You guys want to see me do a full review on this? The more people comment in the comment section, then I'll do it. Okay. Just leave the comments. Okay. Regular reading. Regular reading. All right. But yeah, guys, that's it. That's it for this video. Um, comment, like it. All right, let me turn this bad boy off. All right, I'm out.